Hi, we're back. And now we're going to, we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Stephen Farmer, who is the author of Animals, Personal Tales of Encounters with Spirit Animals. This is the first book in the Common Sense Hien series, and it's chock full of, of wisdom on the spirit animals, who they are, what they are, how you connect with them. And Stephen is going to be speaking with us about that today. So let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Stephen Farmer, though. <clears throat> He is a licensed psychotherapist, shamanic practitioner, trauma recovery specialist, and author of several best-selling books and oracle cards. Stephen serves on the board of the Society of Shamanic pra Practice and his online course, The Path of the Shaman at Sacred You, and many other courses and workshops are available uh, for all. So, and he's the author of Animals, Personal Tales of Encounters with Spirit Animals. So Stephen, welcome. Well, thank you, Ariel. Um, it's my pleasure, believe me. I love talking about this and sharing the information. You know, it, Animals was my introduction to my spirituality about 12 years ago. I think we, we I shared that with you before, so they're very near and dear to my heart. And, and it purposefully was the first book in the series because I believe that it is really a beautiful entry point and a, very, and a place for great deepening as well. It's not surface level, great deepening for people to really experience, you know, the um, divine intelligence we are a part of. So please tell us what are spirit animals? Well, I, first I want to comment on the book and I think it is a treasure. Uh, there's, I remember when the book came out, I sent it to my granddaughter, uh, 11 years old and uh, her mother and they would read some of the stories as bedtime stories that were submitted by other people. And that's the, I think that I would say I'm the author. Yeah, I've got the front and the back piece, you know, the chapters, but the middle chapters are all personal stories that have been submitted. And um, it was just, some, I think it's a really good introduction to the idea. But in answer to your question, what are spirit animals? Uh, my 25 word or less uh, teaching about that is that when an animal shows up in an unusual way and or repeatedly, that means that there's a way that great spirit, you could say God if you prefer, or source, it doesn't matter, but great spirit, we'll use that term, that is in a sense sending that animal to you um, to give you some sort of a message. And my job has been to illuminate those kind of messages through books like uh, Animals, through some of the other publications that I have, the Animal Spirit Guides, etc., and also encourage people to just pay closer attention to these kind of sightings. And the sightings could be, when I say sightings, I mean it could be the physical animal or it could be a symbolic uh, a symbol of the animal. A good example might be buffalo comes up in a dream. You go, what the heck am I dreaming about buffalo for? Uh, or you could see, actually see, let's say you see, like I, this happened to me one time in the neighborhood, is it was about twilight, I was taking my dogs for a walk, and I look over at the street and I go, is that another dog? Oh, no, it's a coyote, you know, here. And that that's not totally uncommon. But if I only see a coyote maybe every four years, I'd say that's unusual. Repetition is also any kind of signs or symbols from uh, spirit that repeat are called synchronicities, typically. Uh, somebody you're walking through the grocery store and, and uh, somebody is talking about elephants. You go home, you decide, okay, I'm going to uh, sit back a while and watch a TV. And the show is about elephants. <laughs> and you go to the supermarket and there's somebody talking about elephants. Those, that's what I mean by repetition. So we look for two or three uh, rep uh, in a short, relatively short space of time. It's another means of how spirit is trying to reach us through these particular beings. It's fascinating and it's not that difficult. And I'm gonna give you some tips about how to interpret the message too, but basically that's it, is that you're looking for the unusual. So I would advise, um, just pay attention. You know, it brings us a little bit closer to the natural world. And we develop that relationship with the physical animal, but as the animal is representing spirit in the way that I've just described, that's when it gets kind of fun. And plus, uh, it gives you some guidance. And uh, my uh, these days, especially, I think the more guidance, 
consistently that we can have the better. And this is one avenue that you can teach your children how to do this. And uh, that's, it's just an incredibly valuable uh, way of accessing spirit, but in a very specific way to present messages to you. And you do what you want with the message, but these are the messages that come to you. Yes, it's interesting. Thank you. You know, the messages are guidance in some way, and they're specific to each person, you know, but it's very layered, I think, as well, because just the act of receiving a message from Great Spirit, you know, to me is is um, supportive. It's reassuring, you know, on many levels, regardless of even what the message is specifically for you, and it's always positive or it's always guidance of some sort, right? For me, just when a message comes, I feel better knowing that, you know, the, uh, that someone, for lack of a better term, has my back, right? Like we're not doing this alone. Yeah, yeah, the, we're, we really are supported in our earth walk, you know, our time here on the earth. And this is a very, this way of operating specifically with animals, but even with the larger field of uh, all the beings on the earth, really, um, the, the land itself and uh, mother earth and the celestial beings, etc. I mean, we've got a lot of different possibilities for those that are ordinarily non-visible as well as the visible beings, animals, for instance, trees, etc. that kind of thing. Yeah, I relate one experience that I think was uh, just kind of fun. Uh, I have, uh, I'm an itinerary, I think that's the right word, um, musician. I don't consider myself a musician, but I I have played guitar for a long time. I've sang for a long time. I do okay with it. And I've even written a few original songs uh, to accompany the guitar. But there was a few years back, I was at that time living in Hawaii. And I thought, you know, I'm going to go ahead and record some of my original songs. <laughs> and uh, so I set up a deal with a recording studio there in the Hawaii. Oh, God bless Hawaii. Anyway, I set up a recording studio there and set a date everything and then that morning when i was getting prepared to go to the recording studio i started having second thoughts you know oh come on you know are the songs really that good you know just that that critical voice in the head and here's what happened uh there was a sliding glass door to the left uh in my office a very small ohana type office and um in hops a a grasshopper boom I swear to God, right in front of my computer. Do you think that's unusual? Yeah, it, it is unusual. And it was at the time. And I think I remember even saying, sort of whispering out loud, okay, Mr. Animal Spirit Guides guy, you know, what's this mean? Uh, and I got to, I confess, one of the ways I tell people is look it up. If you're not sure, you can look it up. There's resources available. Uh, the animals book, uh, you, the internet, uh, some of my publications, etc. cetera. But um, I went to look it up in another book called Animal Spirit Guides. You know, it's got 211 spirit animals in it. And I didn't have grasshopper. <laughs> so, oh, my, what do I do, you know? And I decided to go uh, the direct, I won't say the direct route, but I decided to do a research on the computer. I looked it up, grasshopper, grasshopper, grasshopper spirit guide, grasshopper animal spirit guide, spirit animal grasshopper to see what would come up. And the one that jumped out at me, <laughs> no pun intended, the one that jumped out at me was this one line that said, the male grasshopper sings to attract the female. Now, I wasn't doing, I wasn't singing or recording for that purpose, but sings jumped out at me and it was reassurance that I'm on the right path. to. Go. And I went to the recording studio and I think uh, did a, successful recording and then later went on to record at home etc but it was the first foray into that kind of recording and i thank grasshopper for that message uh, and grasshopper spirit for that message specifically when that animal appears they're like a um, representing i sometimes i'm not to be glib but i call them sales reps you know they're trying to sell you on this guidance in a sense so uh, when an animal appears like that, you pay close attention. 
And there's there's several other instances. And again, some good, really amazing stories in the book Animals, too, if you want to check that out. It's, it's part of the sent, Common Sentience series. Um, and again, there's the, the search button on your computer. Uh, punch in, you know, elephant, animal spirit guide. See what shows up. And I usually tell what um, the books often say is there's here's the possible meanings. And what I want you to look for when you do this is if you look it up this way, see which one of maybe this four to six possible meanings resonates with you. Another really, you, know, it, you can feel it in your body when it clicks, you know, when it's a real hit, like, oh, okay, elephant, overcomer of obstacles. That's what's going on because what I'm finding with my project, my creative project, is I hit a wall. So I ask elephant. And it's another way to work with them, which we're going to get to a little bit more. But so I ask elephant, thank, and I always pray prayers of thanks. I would say 90% of my prayers are like that. There's some that are like, help me out here, Raven. But most of them are prayers of thanks. So I thank you, elephant spirit, you know, for your help, your advice, your counsel, and anything else that can inspire me to continue to move forward and not um, attend, not pay attention to these um, things that are happening as obstacles to the successful completion of my creative project. Great prayer, thank you, Elephant. Um, also, notice I like I like to thank you because it's an expression of appreciation for how much they do help us. So that gives you some ideas about this, and there are other. You can actually call on certain spirit animals to uh, help you with situations like that, like the example with elephant. Stephen, that's wonderful. And what's really beautiful about that is that, like we said, the animals come to us for guidance and we may not even, we're not expecting it, or we may not even realize we need it until it comes, right? But in your book, there's, you you created an appendix and I've never seen anything like this that I think is such a beautiful way also to work with animal spirit guides. You created an appendix of spirit animals for specific purposes. And what you did is kind of turned it this on its head. And, and in that way, I think expanded it quite a bit where you will list something someone might be looking for or, you know, working on, like, for example, abundance and prosperity. And then you listed a number of different animals um, under the topic that can help you with it. So I'd like to go through a few of these because I think that's another really beautiful way to work with animal spirit guides, um, especially if you're not familiar with the different types and you may not necessarily realize um, or they might not be coming to you as strongly as you might want them to, you can kind of know what you might want help with and seek out specific animals, right, to help you. So I'm going to just ask a couple and have you kind of go through it, explain it so we know how this works. And the first one I'm going to talk about or ask you about, you already mentioned, you mentioned Buffalo Spirit and Buffalo Spirit is listed under abundance. So Talk with us about that. How does this work for people? The association, um, thanks, Ariel. The association with the term abundance. Um, abundance has sometimes been characterized by having tons of money, <laughs> you know, but it, it isn't necessarily, it's not just about the money, that it, it really is about connecting with source or spirit in some fashion. And so here we go again with uh, the spirit animals is what, and there are more than just one, but this particular one that comes to mind is buffalo. Why buffalo? Where does buffalo fit into this? Well, the way um, in the days gone by is buffalo were plentiful and they were a source of sustenance for Native American tribes. So there was, um, prayers of thank you to Buffalo Spirit for providing the physical buffaloes to help the tribe uh, go, you know, uh, sustain themselves, you know, during period, any periods, you know, I was going to say periods of hardship, but not just that, but any periods that um, the, the buffalo were abundant in that way. So we take that as a metaphor and also as a 
spirit animal that can assist you with that particular principle of abundance. Yeah, it's nice to have enough money. You know, it definitely is. But it's other, you know, other things, you know, you may be gifted things that you'd be surprised that you've been thinking about. I'd like to get this and that. That's the way it comes. And how you pray in your request would be something like this. Thank you, Buffalo Spirit. Thank you for your support in providing uh, abundant means for me to and my family to sustain ourselves uh, throughout this time that we have on earth and then thank you and then you could even somewhere come across like what i would call um, a physical representation of buffalo you know you go, you go to the metaphysical store and you see one at target or something like that but you find a little buffalo image of a buffalo or you a drawing or a painting of a buffalo you could put it on your wall something like that that gives you a reminder and a visual impression of Buffalo that then sort of seeps into your consciousness even more. And by doing so, then it supports your prayers in that way so that you now have initiated and developed an actual relationship, not just with the animal, the physical animal Buffalo, but with Buffalo spirit. And it will support abundance. There's a good example right there. Yeah. I really, I really love that, Stephen. I love that because it allows us to develop relationships with many different animal spirit spirit allies um, that we resonate with, that we feel a you know a a, a kindred uh, spirit with. Let's do let's do another one to give people more examples. How about in your book you have adapting for survival and you list coyote. Talk to us about that. Well, again, uh, it's a um, it's it's a it's a riff off of coyotes and how they manage to survive. Uh, I live in a neighborhood uh, in uh, Dana Point, California, and there has been sightings occasionally. We have this app; it's called Next Door, and people report about sightings of coyotes. They're very very resourceful. And they are survivors, to say the least, you know, and uh, if somebody once said, well, they came here first, you know, no wonder they eat rabbits, you know, that are roaming around, stuff like that. And sometimes little dogs and also um, <laughs> cats, but uh, from the neighborhood, regardless of what you, how you might, what you might think about that or how you feel about it. Let's look at it from this survival, adaptation, uh, for instance. What I learned about coyotes in my research for this, uh, these, this book and these books is that they have this clever way, let's say, and we got a lot of rabbits too in the neighborhood. And I often see rabbit fur in the, in the park, you know, and well, coyote got a rabbit, you know, it's pretty easy to tell. But what they do is that one coyote will chase the rabbit while three others are waiting <laughs> for the rabbit to come into. And then they've got a feast and they've got a meal. So um, there's an adaptation, even in a fairly suburban neighborhood, relatively suburban neighborhood in this city called Dana Point so in Southern California, where they have made an adaptation and they're able to hunt in this neighborhood and successfully survive because they have been able to adapt. So your prayer to Coyote in that kind of situation, when you're feeling, let's say, a little bit... Um, you're feeling afraid, you know, that, oh, God, am I going to survive this ordeal that's going on? Or will I have enough sustenance, you know, to um, survive? Um, can I can I adjust and make adaptations to this very challenging situation? So then you send your prayers to Coyote Spirit. Thank you, Coyote Spirit, for your guidance, your wisdom. And thank you also for teaching me and reminding me of how I can adapt to this circumstance that I'm dealing with now and how I can also sustain myself and my family uh, through this ordeal. Thank you. I love that. I love the, the connection. It's not random. You know, this, this wisdom is, is certainly based on the behaviors and characteristics and, you know, of the animals. Right. For a reason, for a reason, yeah. it's um, let's do one more. And then I'd like 
to have you just walk us through a short process. Um, let's do, you mentioned elephant. Increasing self-confidence, you have the elephant. Talk to us about that. Yeah, the elephant, sometimes we speak of the spirit animal's um, uh, gift is, is medicine. You know, what's their medicine? Sometimes that term, I think it's a good one to use. And as I mentioned from the earlier story with elephant, uh, one of the gifts or the medicine is that they can, nobody gets in the way of an elephant that's that's charging, you know. How would you, you know, it would be silly to do so. Uh, I suppose you could, you know, to test out your relationship with elephant and elephant spirit. But in this sense, it's, um, it really bolsters, see my body even sits up, you know, as I say this, it bolsters one's self-confidence by calling on elephant spirit as one possible resource, spiritual resource, to help you feel self-confident. Let's say that um, you've got a, a talk to give to a group of some sort, and you haven't done a lot of this. So you you feel kind of shaky and nervous and fearful and hoping it's going right and, and all this. And you're, But you're also um, very well versed in whatever the topic is, but you're still nervous because uh, they did a survey years ago. I read about it. so funny. Uh, uh, the things that we fear, you know, and a list of the things we fear and which one got the most votes. The second most votes was the fear of death. That was number two. Guess what number one was? Public speaking. <laughs> so if you're doing public speaking or teaching of some sort, uh, as somebody once put it, uh, most of us would rather die than get up and talk in front of a group. <laughs> that's, that's not as uh, threatening. Anyway, but let's suppose you are about to do so. And again, a prayer. You can offer prayer to elephant spirit. Elephant spirit, thank you for uh, standing behind me. And my body sits up again as I pray this way. Thank you for standing behind me, helping me tall, uh, stand tall and straight, that I can uh, overcome any of my fears simply by showing up and with your support, being able to uh, uh, tone that nervousness down to uh, the point where I'm relatively calm about doing this, given that a eh, little nervousness is fine. That's very normal, but thank you for that. I appreciate 100% your support. So thank you. And then you go and give your talk and you know that elephant spirit has got your back, so to speak. So you can always kind of let that uh, image and that feeling, that sensation drift. And again, I find it so interesting that my body sits up even as I talk about this, because that's a, a measure of confidence is to be able to stand tall. So if that's a, a, an issue for you in some way, call on elephant. And then uh, elephant was already, already telling me this without my being consciously aware of it. Sit up straight, sit up tall, not rigid, just full stature is another way to put it. Stand in your full stature, sit in your full stature. Thank you, Elephant. I got to say, can I, do we have time for one more? Sure, absolutely. Briefly, briefly. I'll keep it brief because it's so obvious. You're going through a, a really big time of change. You know, maybe as a result of a loss or a shift or a movement of some sort to another geographical location. And you realize there's a lot going on internally. You know, there's, there's spiritual stuff that's happening that's really working you butterfly call on butterfly that is an amazing process uh, i i read a detailed report of what exactly happens when the worm transitions to a butterfly but my point for our conversation here is um we'll call it transformation because i believe when you're following a spiritual path and you're doing your best to be congruent with spirit that you can legitimately call these phases that we go through sometimes challenging, you know, sometimes there are periods of suffering that when you emerge, that you really have changed significantly. So you call on butterfly, or dare I say, even snake as a possibility because of the shedding of the skin. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I There's someone I know that did a ceremony with snake skin you know, uh, I don't need to go into detail about the ceremony, but as a representation of, of uh, shedding a former identity. So good stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you first mentioned butterfly, what came to me was how graceful they are. And so 
you know, how beautifully they can support us through change in, in, in a graceful, in a graceful way. Right. I'll um, say this. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the spirit animal, Stephen, it's, you know, you, you've really kind of given us a process the whole time because you keep modeling the prayers or the, 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 uh, developing the relationship. You, you speak about the animal spirit, elephant spirit, buffalo spirit, not just an elephant or a buffalo. So you've been, you've been teaching this whole way through regarding the process, but just for, just for um, real clarity, if somebody wanted to begin um, or deepen their relationship, breath, right? First take a breath, kind of lead us through there. What would you, how would you uh, lead someone through this? Uh, pretty simple. Um, what it requires is uh, to relax as much as possible. Understand, too, that you will perceive spiritual information through your vision and or your hearing, the inner voice, the mind's eye, and or, and I include, it could be all three, but um, we tend to be, rely a little bit more on one or the other. And the third would be body, sensory. Uh, uh, you saw a spontaneous demonstration of that without, I, I noticed it when I said it about sitting up, for instance. So here's what we do. I, I'd like you to all just pause, close your eyes, and I'll guide you through this. Again, it's going to be fairly brief. Take a nice, deep, full breath. And when you release it, feel your body relax, feel your shoulders relax. Your stomach, if it's tight, feel that relaxed with each in breath. So, so just continue in a nice rhythmic breathing. Uh, breathing, Yeah, that's fair. A nice um, rhythmic way of breathing. <clears throat> now, um, you may have a particular question in mind about something. And if so, just focus on that question for now. If you don't have a question, then the question would be, I'd like a message, just a general message. If you do have a question, I'd like a message from a spirit animal about this particular question. Continue your breathing breath. And now, we ask Great Spirit to provide that particular and specific spirit animal to come forth with each and every one involved in this particular communication to receive a, a spirit animal that will be helpful for their particular consideration, a spirit animal that will provide a simple message that will provide further guidance for their life path. Take a deep breath. You can state or restate that prayer in some way. And I want you to notice who shows up amongst the animals. And again, you may see them. You might hear them. Example, raven. You might hear raven doing a call. Uh, you might feel elephant. You know, the, the boldness and the density of element, uh, elephant. You might hear the message in your inner mind, that voice inside. So take just a few more moments Good. Breathe and relax. And again, it's really not about trying. It's allowing spirit to provide that particular messenger. Okay. I, I And I got one. <laughs> I'll share with you really briefly. Eagle came to me. And Eagle, uh, I heard in my inner voice, fly above the fray fly above the fray. Now, there could be a, any number of messages that would come from eagle. That particular one first, uh, a sighting, <clears throat> so to speak, I could see a, an eagle, just a flash. And then as commonly happens for me, as I hear something, and what I heard was that, fly above the fray. So now continue to breathe. Good. And I would invite trust what you get. Even if it doesn't immediately make sense, trust what you get. Because beyond this, what we're doing here, beyond this talk, you can continue 
to search to see what this spirit animal has to say to you. So we're going to complete this guided meditation. I realize, like I said, it's very short. So don't be um, discouraged if nothing came to you right away. Keep asking, keep asking, and then trust whatever you get. You might be shown in the physical realm, you know, an answer to your question. You might open your eyes and your eyes are directed to a particular thing in the environment. And perhaps that's part of the answer to your inquiry. So God bless you all for this. And um, thank you for listening to this. And I trust that it's going to be useful and helpful. Again, check out uh, the animals book, part of the Common Sentient series. Uh, and again, I remind you, that's uh, my little granddaughter and her mom were reading these stories at one time. Children love them. Children love animals. It's quite natural for children to just be attracted to animals. Stephen, thank you so much. That, that was very powerful. I received a message as well. Um, would you like me to share who came in? Love to. Uh, un very unexpectedly. Um, and I will tell you that when you started, I was thinking of elephant. So I'm thinking like, oh, it's going to be elephant. Like I'm almost like forcing like something there. Music. And but but then what happened? very unexpectedly was gorilla showed up very very powerfully like just right there like no 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 elephant you know move aside because you know that's what ariel was bringing telling thinking she was supposed to but it, i'm the one who has a message for her so i i have some thoughts on that i got a little bit more information i'm going to do a little deeper inquiry with gorilla spirit when after our call for sure but thank you that was unexpected and actually really powerful so when it's fun you know when it's unexpected it's like your usual mind sort of conjured up elephant because we've been talking about it like you <laughs> said your description of your process and also that like i've suggested to everyone who's listening to this you know, go for a little more information you know take it a little bit further beyond the time we've spent together here and Absolutely. thank you sharing thank you Thank you. So you've been uh, listening with Dr. or Dr. Stephen Farmer. He's the author of Animals, Personal Tales of Encounters with Spirit Animals. I encourage you, this book is chock full of uh, um, so much wisdom. And as Dr. Farmer has said, also true mystical experiences with um, spirit animals as well. So thank you, Dr. Farmer. Thank you and uh, God bless everyone who's listening in. Yeah.